15. Pull that time, you can't turn on your... We're ready to... Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you have to have an air at least do it. If you have a central system, there's no children. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for welcome all of you to our April 28th uh, trustee meeting for the City University Construction Fund. Uh, before we start, what I'd like to do is to go around the room and have everybody introduce themselves. I want to note for your information that um, uh, this session is being uh, taped and will be webcast and available on our uh, City University uh, websites. Uh, my name is Philip Berry. I'm the acting chairman of the construction fund. And we'll go around the room, and then after we go through with um, introductions, I'll note uh, whether we have a quorum or not. Ben o. Schmidt, uh, chairman of the CUNY board. Wellington Chen, trustee. I'm um, Denar Cummings, um, New York State Division of Budget. Zach Scar Kelly, uh, COB. Well. Gwen Perlman, City University. Jennifer Friedman, CUNY. Nancy Nichols, special assistant to the fund. Megan Moore Wilk, Director of Space Planning for the University. Uh, Mike Stagulis, I'm a Program Director with Dormitory Authority, State of New York. I'm Bob Lemieux, I'm from CUNY. Judy Burktown, Deputy to the Vice Chancellor. Howard Altruer, CFO to the Fund. Rick Schaefer, and General Counsel to both the Fund and CUNY. Iris Wancho, Executive Director of the Fund. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, Rick, uh, I believe we have a quorum. Do we have a quorum for our meeting? We do indeed. Okay, thank you. So we will proceed. We do have a quorum. It's so particularly nice to have the folks from the state division here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've been watching on television all these years, and we really didn't want to share whether you existed or not. So I, guess, I thought they were avatars. <laughs> it's good to have confirmation of your existence. Thank you for Well, welcome on, on this uh, very fine day into New York City. Thank you. And we hope the rest of your day will be as productive as this meeting is. <laughs> What I'd like to do first is I hope everybody has uh, read the minutes. I'd like to entertain any amendments to the minutes. Are there any amendments that need to be moved to the minutes? Well, yes. small, this is a very small amendment. Sure. Um, the, uh, the director of budget, her name is Anglin, and that's spelled A-N-G-L-I-N. Thank you very much. No, it's important. Everybody's name is important. <laughs> And so with no thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Where did that come from? Which page? Okay. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's a, a little footnote uh, okay. dropping from Zach's name, and it should be Laura Anglin. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Unless you feel her name. Thank you for that direction. Any other minutes to the minutes? I'll move their adoption. Thank you very much. Is there a second? Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Yeah. Carries. We'll now proceed to the next uh, action item, which is the uh, in your notes in front of you. You will note that it's the resolution for a um, authorizing design services contract uh, for the design of the science building complex phase one at Brooklyn College. And let me just read the resolve, and then we'll have an explanation. Uh, resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University Construction Fund authorize the Executive Director to execute a design contract with the firm of Mitchell Dorgola Architects LLP for the Design and Construction Administration Services as required for the Science Building Complex Phase 1 at Brooklyn College. CUNY Project Number BY. 070006. The contract costs shall be chargeable to the state construction fund for an amount not to exceed 19 million. The contract shall be subject to approval as to form by the fund's general counsel. Um, Executive Director, can we please have an explanation? Sure. Um, this is a, uh, a new science building that's going to be built out at Brooklyn College. Um, it will be on the site which currently houses Roosevelt Hall, which is the gym facility at Brooklyn College. Um, and as everyone around this table knows, we um, are about to complete a new gym facility for Brooklyn College at the West Quad Building. And so therefore, the plan calls for the uh, deconstruction of uh, Roosevelt Hall and a reconstruction of a new science complex. Um, this science um, complex will be built in two phases. Phase one um, will be primarily for instructional space and instructional labs. Um, it'll be about 180,000 square feet. Phase two will be um, 100,000 square foot addition to the building and um, 
initially it called for all um, research science space for the 100,000 square feet. And one of the aspects that we're working out with the campus in light of the fact that ASRC is being built um, up at City College, as and everyone knows, ASRC is a university-wide um, research facility. Um, we're not quite uh, sure that the college will need 100,000 square feet of research space. And so what we're going to be working out with the college, what mix will it be? Will it be additional instructional space and research space? Or will it be all instructional space and will we leave the research space out? But that has to be really worked out with the college. And uh, Mr. Chairman, we're very excited about this project. Um, it's, it's yet another um, uh, uh, project in terms of achieving the decade of the sciences for CUNY. Um, and in particular, at Brooklyn College, uh, it will give them state-of-the-art uh, facilities in terms of teaching science at the college. And by the way, Ms. Mitchell Gergler has done a lot of work for CUNY. Um, they did Powder Maker Hall um, at Queens College, and they are currently the architects on the extension of Remsen Hall um, at Queens College as well. Um, and we are uh, very excited about their work. They're also working with us at LaGuardia. So they are an architectural firm that knows CUNY and is familiar <coughs> with uh, our needs. That's great. Well, thank you very much. Any uh, questions or comments? Uh, is the cost of the, this is just the planning part? No, no, this is, they're going to design the building. Mitchell Jerkle is going to design the building for us. That's the cost of the design of the building. Okay. I see you expect this 180 square foot building to cost about 230 million? Yeah. In, today, in, in, uh, in today's dollars, yes, we expect it because it's, it's science and science uh, is costing us about $1,200 a square foot because there will be labs there and so we're, we're finding that our science buildings are costing us a lot more than just our instructional spaces. Is, is there a difference in price now? I mean, are we getting any better deals the, in this the, present economy? On, the the on answer is yes, yeah. and yes, and yes. Um, <laughs> uh, we are we're we're noting that um, uh, for foundation work and steel work, that the price is coming down anywhere from 15 to 17 percent. Um, the trades are not following suit, um, and we believe that's because. Um, uh, the uh, Labor Council has not reached an agreement with um, uh, those of us who use these trades, and they're still holding their prices pretty firm. But the foundation in the steel is definitely coming down, um, and so we are reaping the benefit uh, of those lower prices. That's right. But we're, we're not seeing the kind of increases in costs that we saw two to three years ago, where there were you know, double-digit increases on a manual basis. And even on the trade, just didn't get a little tighter, but not not the kind of reduced prices that we're seeing for steel and, and the foundation work. So. I, I saw a couple of months ago that there were negotiations going on between the construction unions and the real estate board or whatever group. Yeah, it, it broke down. Those talks broke down, broke apart. They, oh, really? They, yeah. The, the unions <laughs> feel that they're, they're not at such a, a crucial economic time they really got to do give backs and, and sort of, you know, <coughs> to bring it back to where it was a few years ago. Um, I, I believe that um, what you're seeing now is you're beginning to see a slowdown in the construction trades because if people weren't in the ground already and if they didn't have their construction financing or their permanent financing, you know, if they don't have it now, they're not going to get it. And it's going to be very hard for them to start projects. So I believe that what's going to happen, and I don't know, Mike, if you, you would agree, mm -hmm. I think in probably like the next six or nine months, you're going to see far fewer private construction projects started. I'm very soon. Yeah. There's been a 10% reduction in the last six months um, in starts. And a, quite a few projects had started and stopped after steel. They abandoned the project at that point until the economy turns around and they'll continue to work. You know, a lot of developers, um, you know, when the 421 project was about to sunset, a lot a lot of developers just put foundations in, yeah. in the ground, as you know, Wellington, and that's where they, they stay. I mean, just the foundations are there, and they have a little bit of activity on the site, but not a heck of a lot. So, you know, really the, the major game in town is um, CUNY and the MTA and, um, you know, whatever state building is going on. 
Um, that's really the major amount of, of construction, or at least the new projects that are beginning, is really government building. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Yes. Of the 180,000 square feet, is the, um, the portion that you are in discussion with our programmatic league, what percentage would that be? Well, the, what we're in discussion about is phase two, which is the 100,000 square feet. And um, we originally thought, and Megan, correct me if I'm wrong, it was going to be 50,000 for uh, research space, mm -hmm. then another 50,000 for offices and um, classrooms. And, and and classrooms. Space, yes. Yeah, so, that, the, so the, the phase two is going to be 50-50, 50 for research science, 50 for the college's use. And what are you seeing now in construction costs on just classroom <coughs> or office kind of space where you don't have Probably five to six hundred dollars a square foot. Where well, was that eight hundred dollars, seven yeah. eight hundred dollars a square foot? Now the reason that the science buildings are so expensive, in addition to specialized equipment, is that the HVAC in science buildings yeah. is a hundred percent out. No, so it just drives, well, well, drives your costs up dramatically. No, I know. I, I remember you know, we built them at Yale, and they were yes. twice, if not more than twice, what everything else. Okay. Any other? Um, just want to note, you know, as we're able to see prices come down, we're also noting that, you know, when we negotiate with architectural firms now, they also are a little bit more hungry, and so, you know, Bob and his team are trying to get the best price possible for CUNY in terms of negotiating those fees with the architects as well. That's great. Thank you so much. So, can I have a motion? I'll, I'll move it. Resolution. Is there a second? Second. Any other question on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? It carries. The next item will be the resolution of the uh, City University Construction Fund authorizing the C and Build contract for the construction of the Performing Arts Center at Gershwin Hall. <coughs> I'll read the resolution. Uh, resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University Construction Fund authorize the Executive Director to execute a C and Build contract with the firm of Hill International Inc for pre-construction and construction management services and construction as required for the Performing Arts Center at Brooklyn College CUNY project number BY 600-006. The contract cost shall be chargeable to the state capital construction fund for an amount not to exceed 5.0 million for management services with a total amount of $70 million for both management services and construction. The contract shall be subject to approval as to form by the Fund's General Counsel. Seems like this is the Brooklyn College Day. Yeah, it um, is. <laughs> the, um, the college um, was in need of additional performing arts space at Brooklyn College. And originally, the project entailed uh, building a, a new building in between Gershwin Hall and Whitman Hall, which are the performing arts facilities at Brooklyn College. Um, when we looked at um, what was being proposed, and when we looked at the, um, the life of Gershwin Hall and its condition, we decided that it didn't make sense to build a new building in between the two existing buildings, but really to take Gershwin Hall down and to take that appropriation and the gifts that were associated and really enhance a new Gershwin Hall at Brooklyn College. In addition, when we started to do site work um, for what was this proposed sliver building in between the two existing buildings, um, it turns out that the building would have had to be built over a New York City sewer, yeah, it's a sewer. sewer line. In conversations with DEP, it became very clear that they were not going to give, a give us authorization to place a new building over their sewer line. Um, and it would have, if we had continued that discussion with them, um, it was our opinion that it would have been years before we would have gotten a decision. And probably the, the answer would have been no anyway. So um, uh, the college and we are very excited about this project for a number of reasons. Um, first and foremost, this is going to be one of the first projects we're doing without DASNY. Uh, Bob and his group um, will be doing um, the construction management of this project um, in-house within, uh, within CUNY. Um, the second thing is that um, uh, we have, as you know, uh, enlisted the services of Norman Pfeiffer as the architect for this project. 
and um, this will be the first time that we'll be building a performing arts center in which the stage will be designed for both theater and music, something that we don't traditionally have here at CUNY. We separate that out, but um, Norman has really designed quite a unique theater for us to be able to use uh, at the campus and, and in particular at the college. Um, I'm going to let Bob discuss the CM build approach and why we chose to go that way. Okay. The, um, we did a, a complete RFQ pre-qualification and then RFP to select the hill, but the intent here is to have the CM hold the construction contracts. We will manage, we, we will, they will competitively bid it, but they will hold the construction contracts which will, it gives more teeth to a CM as, as opposed to having the owner hold the contracts and the CM doing construction management. It is the typical way that it is done in the private sector. The CM holds the contracts and manages the, contra the contractors that are working to build the project. Um, and this will be the first project like this that we've entered into, but we think that's got a real mode of success. I mean. You were at Yale. That's the way Yale does it. That's the way I did it when I was at Columbia. That's the way that buildings get built outside of government normally. Yeah. And, um, and Bob, you feel you'll have more um, accountability on, on the part of the firm, right? Yes. The I mean, the CM is responsible for making sure that it gets built and basically make sure that the, con that the contractors are, I mean, they have the direct responsibility. There's nobody in between them. So it, it keeps it keeps that responsibility where it should be in terms of delivering the project. And we will manage the CM. I mean, that's, that's the way we will staff the job. We will be in the field. Um, DASME normally has, has had that role for us. They've been in the field. This time it's going to be our people in the field. Um, it, it keeps us closer to the project in a, in a different way. And I think that that's a positive thing for CUNY and for this project. So that's the model that we're, we're looking forward to. This is the first one, as Iris said. Um, it will not be the last one. So. Questions, comments? Or? Hearing none, can I have a motion to, uh, uh, to <coughs> move the resolution? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? It carries. Thank you very much. The next item is the resolution of the construction, City University Construction Fund authorizing consulting services. I will read the resolution. And the Board of Trustees of the City University Construction Fund authorizes the Executive Director to accept a consulting services proposal from the firm of Pacific Partners Consulting Group, PPCG, for additional consulting services associated with the development of a state of good repair document and related data. The cost shall be chargeable to the City University Construction Fund for an amount not to exceed $128,000. Can you please comment? Sure. Um, it, it, as this board remembers, last year we, uh, we did a state of good repair report um, on our CUNY facilities. And um, it was this firm that uh, actually helped us to collect the data and analyze the data about our facilities. Um, with reports of this nature, you need to keep updating them. Um, you know, buildings are almost like living beings. You know, they get older, they don't get younger. They have additional problems, additional concerns. And so um, we would like to have this contract with this firm so that we can continue to update the data and the information about our facilities. I think as the board knows also, um, the state was very generous. We um, have gotten funded now two years of critical maintenance money. Uh, the money last year and the budget that was passed uh, only a few weeks ago, we got another $284 million. So, Clearly, this is data that we want to keep very current and to know where the hot spots are and where we should be spending the money. Okay. Any other comments? Did PPCG do the SUNY study? Yes, they did. They did. Okay. They did. And by the way, they were in last week um, uh, to meet with the staff, and they're beginning to help us put together our database that we're going to be able to use to do the analysis going forward. Yeah, questions, comments? Yeah. Hearing that, can I have a motion to approve? I'll move it. And is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? It carries. Um, at this point, what we'd like to do is to have a report from the executive director. Sure, thank you. Well, we are very busy here at the CUNY and at the CUCF. Um, 
I'd like to report to the board that two of the major projects that we've been working on for the last couple of years will be completed in May. Um, that's in the West Quad building at Brooklyn College. And um, I guess it's now called the Bernard and Ann Spitzer School of Architecture. I have to stop calling it the Sodler building. <laughs> uh, called the Spitzer building. Um, and uh, they will be um, moving into both these buildings uh, in May. Um, and even though the West Quad building, the gym portion, isn't totally complete, uh, there is the second and third floor of office space and student services that will be able to be used. In addition, um, Remsen Hall, the extension of Remsen Hall out of Queens College, um, we believe that um, in the next um, eight to ten weeks that project will be completed as well. So. Um, uh, I've enjoyed uh, my, uh, my construction tours of these buildings, but I think they'll soon end because uh, they will be turned over to the colleges. So we're very excited about that. Um, we are extremely busy with a number of projects that have started construction. Uh, the ASRC complex out at City College. Um, we are doing um, uh, the site work um, and cleaning uh, out all the rock that has to be uh, removed because um, this building, these two buildings, are going to go down very deep uh, into the ground. Um, we have gotten our CP approval from the city for Fitterman Hall, and uh, I don't know, maybe Mike will talk a little bit about, you know, his plans, but I do know that um, the building is officially cleaned now, and we are starting preparatory work for demolition of Fitterman Hall. And um, uh, I know that that is... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> major accomplishment. It's good to hear that. Um, and I, I, maybe Mike in his report will talk about um, uh, their, DASNY's plans for um, uh, bidding out the work on, on Fitterman Hall. Mike, sure. yeah. And um, at Bronx Community College, um, the North Instructional Building, um, they're starting site work there and they're beginning to get bids in on that project, as well as Lehman College. Uh, the new science building, uh, we are starting work on that as well. Um, so there's a lot of activity, and that's just the major projects. You know, on state of good repair, um, we gave a number of task orders to DASNY um, uh, to start working on many of these projects that have sort of been more abundant for the last um, few years. I just also want to note on our first uh, public-private partnership, uh, we are starting demolition of the site um, at, uh, for the Hunter School of Social Work at 118th Street, 119th Street. Mm -hmm. We officially own all the land now, and um, uh, we're going to start demolition of the existing structures there. And we believe that um, uh, not only will we, we have additional savings in construction costs, but we believe we'll be able to really put this building up in, in record time. This is the social work? Social work building, yes. Mm -hmm. um, so we are very it's busy. It's a wonderful facility. It is. It really is. It's really a beautiful it building. It really um, utilizes uh, the participation of the community. It's transparent so that people in the community feel they can relate to it, feel that they're part of it. Even though it's called the School of Social Work, I think as everybody knows, the School of Public Health um, will have uh, their, their home there as well. Um, and so uh, they will be sharing uh, both the uh, classroom space and the office space with the, uh, the School of Social Work. So we are very busy, Mr. Chairman, and uh, you know we hope to continue to be very busy here at, uh, at CUNY. Well, you're, you're doing, you and your team are doing great work, and we really commend you for it. Um, the college presidents uh, do comment to us often about uh, how receptive uh, you and your team are uh, to a lot of their inquiries, and, and so it's just good to see all of these uh, not shovel ready. You're already ready, and you're you're executing. So. Uh, just sure. one more note, um, the uh, dorm at Queens College, mm -hmm. um, we were out there two weeks ago, and um, the structure is completely up, um, and the contractor is going to make the date. He's going to complete that building by August, and therefore students, August. yes, students will be moving in this fall. <laughs> we hope many more than we have signed <laughs> up now, but uh, it's, it's quite a sight to behold. Um, uh, in terms of the record time that they put up this building. And it's quite a nice facility on the campus, so um, we're very happy about that project. You're going to have to go out there and make a visit. <laughs> <laughs> so much stuff going on there at my old alma mater. Yeah. It's good news. Well, thank you very much. Anything else to report? No. Nope. Any other questions for the executive director? Yeah, I, I had a comment a couple, and then a couple of questions. Sure. Um, 
it was my experience at Yale that it was very hard to get architects who had to live in a building that another architect designed to praise it. But I had a chat with George Rinaldi, who says that the faculty at the School of Architecture are thrilled by the functionality of the new building and how great it is going to be to work in it, how open it is, how students and faculty can work together on design problems. So, um, <clears throat> so that project is uh, is getting is winning a lot of praise from the from the users. Uh, just a couple of questions on sure. a few things. Uh, is the uh, is that controversy with the structural biology center at City College? Is that where are we past that? We we are we are experiencing a very good relationship with them. So um, they're not worried about this deep drilling. Uh, well, w they're worried about the blasting and about the uh, you know the rock excavation and. Um, uh, we, we believe we will not have to do any blasting out there, that the backhoes are able to chop, uh, chop the rock uh, manually. So that's a big plus. And any disruption that we've had, um, it's within the realm of the agreement that Rick had negotiated with them. And we're able to work with them in terms of figuring out when their machines should be working and when they shouldn't be working. So I would say today it's a very good relationship that we have. I don't know you would disagree, Bob? Or no, I, I, it, we've not had any real problem at all. A couple little hiccups in the beginning, but the fact that we've not had to blast kind of mitigates some of their anxiety. So and we don't think we're going to have to blast at all. I'm sorry. They, they, they've been monitoring their machines. We've had no interruption or interference with their NMRs, which are their really big machines out there. They continue to operate throughout. And on their uh, cryo-electron microscopes, there's been some problem, uh, and so they've rescheduled a lot of their experiments for the late afternoon and evening, and we have a schedule of liquidated damages for every hour that the machines are out of uh, um, operation, and the cost uh, under the schedule of liquidated damages has been running somewhere between twenty and $30,000 a month, which was much, much more modest than we had anticipated it was going to be. So from a financial perspective, as well as from perspective of good relations with our neighbor, uh, it's really worked out very well. Okay. And is there any, uh, is, it, is it too early to ask whether you have any thoughts about where the, uh, uh, the school of pharmacy that we talked about yesterday's meeting, where that might be located? I, I think our thought right now, because of the, the Federal Drug Administration being out um, in Jamaica at New York College. At York. Yes, to put it at York. Um, there are a number of opportunities on the campus um, for us to build a building, um, a number of buildings out there, because we don't have a shortage of space at York like we do in some of our other campuses. So um, our thinking right now is to put it at York. And as a matter of fact, Megan's involved in a master plan um, at York. And we've included this as part of the thinking about the master plan. Where would we put it? How would it fit in with the rest of the college? And it, it, is it do you know as yet, is the School of Pharmacy likely to include a lot of uh, research labs? I wouldn't characterize as research labs. There will be labs, but they're yeah, not. Certainly science labs. They're science labs, but they're not research labs. So that means they're, they're constructed differently and they're more for instructional as opposed to individual professors doing research. Okay. And any thoughts about the uh, new community college? Well, um, we. We have a very good site for it. Um, it's the uh, the building that John Jay occupies right now. So um, that's the presumptive. The presumptive uh, uh, home would be because it's a it's a piece of property that we own, we control, and we don't have to go out and acquire a land or a building to build on. So um, that's what we're looking at. And uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm 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 thrilled that the faculty loves the architecture school. I must tell you, when we first went out there. Um, we sort of didn't get it, you know. We're used to science buildings and, and instructional buildings, and I see what they're talking about because it is a very open experience. Yeah. 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 And so now that we're completing construction, we sort of get what the architect was trying to achieve here. There was one little wrinkle when uh, 
Iris went out there the first time, and then I went out there. The fellow who was showing us around was about six five, and he had a hard hat on yes. the top, and he kept bumping his 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 hard hat. <laughs> uh, there, there, there are a couple places where the ceiling's a little bit low, and Iris posed a very interesting legal question to me as to whether there was any law that would uh, prevent us from limiting the height of either faculty or students <laughs> in order to lessen our liability risks at the School of Architecture. <laughs> Reminds me of George Stiegler's yeah. great joke that all great economists are tall. You know, Keynes was a towering guy. Mm -hmm. And then he said the only two exceptions to this rule are Milton Friedman and John Kenneth Galbraith. <laughs> <laughs> In retrospect, we probably should have ripsawed Ladown altogether as opposed to trying to renovate what was a library building into an architecture school uh, because that really caused the problems of the, the lower right, ceiling. Yeah. So. Right. Um, I do hope that they uh, have shorter students coming into the school <laughs> than uh, the project manager has. <laughs> but, but before, before we end, I, I just want to note uh, that I think it's today is uh, Iris Weintraub's second anniversary at CUNY oh, and at the oh, Construction oh, Fund. Wow. Uh, things yeah. been accomplished. Yes. Yeah. Seems like you've been here forever. Right? I know. It feels <laughs> like I've been here forever. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rick. Well, that's yeah. 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 Well, this I croissant. Put, I, I put on what they call the CUNY 15. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> food at every meeting at CUNY. Yeah. You can really uh, you can pack it on here. Yeah. Construction oh. treadmill somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. We need a gym somewhere, yeah. you know. We do. We do. Any other items? Uh, no, but I would like to. What the Bronx Community College, what blasting group required? Um. No, we shouldn't no. have to blast. There is rock excavation required, yeah. but we don't have we don't anticipate blasting. It's it's a slope though. It's not a it's right. Well, on the on the north side. It's a slope. On the north side is site is yeah. rock excavation. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. You know, on the subject of excavation, I think I just learned this yesterday that one of the reasons uh, we are not using uh, blasting at the ASRC building, in addition to the fact that the rock is a little bit softer than had been anticipated, is we we have these new backhoes that. Uh, uh, are being used, I guess, for the first time. Um, uh, it's sort of the super duper backhoe, uh, and the contractor has been very pleased and is w w wanting to use some publicity from the site uh, in order to market this uh, elsewhere because they have been extremely effective in, in splitting the rock. Has anybody heard whether Columbia is going to, uh, what the schedule is on the new campus up at? Are they going to actually start building up there soon? The first thing that they have to do is build the bathtub for the, and the foundation for the thing. I have not heard of the schedule, but I think it's a little bit delayed. I mean, they, you know, because Harvard delayed back. their All new school, campus yeah. indefinitely. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. That could have an effect on our pricing. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It'll for be sure. Positive in terms of yeah. exactly. Yeah. You want you want you know you want these contractors to be very hungry. Yeah. What about it? Michael, um, well, it's good to see you. Can yeah. you give us a report from the uh, I'll be brief. Um, to pick up on uh, what Executive Director Weinshaw was talking about with Fitterman, um, we've gotten in final estimates for both the uh, PM at risk and our, uh, and our estimating firm. And we're about to sit down for reconciliations on that estimate. Um, in general, the estimates look pretty favorable uh, compared to what we were seeing last year even. Um, with respect to bidding, uh, we've sent out some documents on the foundation for pricing. Uh, we probably will be awarding foundations within two months. The idea is that uh, we should start demolition hopefully in May, uh, complete that this fall, and begin foundations immediately thereafter. Uh, th there would be two other packages under the Fitiman job. One is the uh, shore and the core and shell, and the fit out. There would be three GMPs uh, that set, that's set up in that, that way. And they, they should all be completed bidding by the end of the year. So um, the other two um, projects that I was asked to talk about are both in the Bronx, and then one is at the one at the Bronx Community College, which is the library project. And the other is the science building at Lehman College. Uh, both of those are in bidding. Uh, the, the foundations have started at Lehman, but generally they're both in bidding. For, for the Bronx Community College, that's a $100,000 gross square foot building. It's a library and classrooms. Um, you have classrooms on the ground floor. You have library space 
on the two uh, upper level floors. Um, we've bid to date nine, nine of the 15 packages. And um, the, the bidding has been very favorable on, on those packages. Uh, they've all bid it this year. Um, this is a set aside campus, uh, so um, many of these packages are being bid either small business set aside or minority set aside. Uh, probably nine of those 15 are either small business or minority set aside bids uh, on those packages that we would we'll be bidding for that for that project. We have um, the electrical package the bids are due later this next week or even yeah next week and then uh, for the uh, integrated building systems package should be bid within two weeks after that. Then what's left is probably less than 8% of the total value of the project. So we would have bid out over 90% of our project uh, value as of middle of next month on that project. For Lehman, we had bid the foundations deal uh, last fall. And uh, the foundations have started. The steel is in fabrication. The other bids, uh, there's four other primes under that bidding. Uh, they're all due next month. Uh, probably the 19th is the bid date. So we're looking forward to starting those two projects up. And uh, uh, like I said, the, the bidding in general has been very good. <coughs> and what we've seen over the last, since the beginning of the year, we've probably bid about 30 projects, packages. And they've all come in, uh, as an average, uh, significantly below estimate. So we're uh, very optimistic. That's it for now. OK, thank you. Any other uh, questions for, for Michael? Any other items of business from anybody? Again, we're glad to see uh, Zach and Denardo to see you here in person. Uh, always feel free to come here and visit us. So. Uh, if there are no other items, then I'll entertain a motion. Well, the next meeting that we have scheduled is for May the 28th. I think we'll get to you. That seems rather soon, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Most likely the next meeting will be the June meeting. Yeah, that's what I would think. So we'll, we'll 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 in June? Set aside yet? Uh, Not yet. I, I we, we, we do, but I just don't remember what it is. And we're trying to figure out if we want to do it on a campus where we have something to show and, you know, where we can also do video conferencing for the meeting and then whoever wants to take a tour afterwards could. So it I seems like either Brooklyn or Queens. Or yeah, City. City. I know it's pretty far up there, but, uh, you know, I think, it would be, I think it would be interesting to physically see, you know, uh, that that building and also see yeah, yeah and see what's going on at the ASRC site. So we'd like to discuss it with uh, yeah. you and, yeah, and the uh, board. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, think so. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. 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 Good.